Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I am thrilled you're here with me today, and I have a question for you. Do you look at your business sometimes and think that I'm having revenue issues? It's got to be related to sales. It's got to be related to marketing. And you dive in, maybe even hire a coach, maybe even take an online course on how to sell or what to do for your marketing strategies to improve your overall bottom line. And then still nothing changes. Well, today we're going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. And just to hit straight to the the core of what we're going to be talking about today is it's quite often not your sales, not your marketing, but your client experience. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. So we're going to dive into that. We're going to tell you how you can improve it. Okay. All right. Katrina Scarlett, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me. It is such an honor to be here. And yeah, just so excited to connect with your audience. Well, good. We're glad to have you. And this is a conversation. We did one episode previously on client retention, and I'm going to link that in the show notes, listeners, so you can go and go down that rabbit hole and learn more about that, more insight. But for the sake of today, we are going to talk to Katrina about all things client service, client experience, and see where you can improve client retention to increase your bottom line, your revenue, your profit. All right. Before we do that though, Katrina, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? Yeah. Well, in kind of high level and quick, I was spent two decades basically in luxury resort management. So hospitality has been like ingrained in me from day one. And I also come from a tech background because my dad is a program engineer. And so I realized it was time to hang up my resort kid shoes, as they say, and was um, introduced to the world of online business through a few different connections. And that took me down this path of kind of starting in the world of operations, integration, support for business owners and leveraging my tech side until somebody really drew it out to my attention that my secret sauce was hospitality and customer service and looking at things with a customer centric perspective in the online space. And once that was kind of brought to my attention, I started realizing it wasn't the norm. I just thought everyone thought that way, (laughs) right? We don't know what we don't know. We just think it's obvious. Um, And so, yeah, so that really got me thinking about, okay, how can I lean into this more and really like claim what I do well and help others do it well? And then what is that trickle effect that it has in their business? And so it's been an eight year journey. I've had my business now for eight years. And so it's just been that kind of iteration and evolution, but that's where it all started, kind of marrying two things I'm really good at. Of course. And that makes total sense, right? When we yeah. take the gifts yeah. that God's given us and the th- experiences we've had, and we merge them with our values, yeah. our visions, and our passions, and yeah. voila, we have something that fulfills yeah. us and serves other people. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So first of all, you don't look old enough to have been working for two decades in the hospitality industry, but mm-hmm. what is the what is the most bougie resort you worked at? Ah, so I finished my career with JW Marriott at their signature property here in Canada as their senior event manager. So JW is, uh, is is my, they are in my blood for sure. So it's, uh, you know, high end, high end Marriott. And then I also did a four year stint with celebrity cruise lines. So I also, I also was in that world in my early twenties and thank you for the shout out about looking young. I am very happy to claim that I'm 43 years old. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, to me, that's still young. So, <laughs> right, exactly. And I am so proud of it. So, but yes, I start. I started in, uh, in resorts when I was about 15. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it listeners, two decades. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. Let's start with, I think where the, the bottom line really hits, right? What mm. is the difference between customer service and customer experience? Ah, So I like to describe it that your customer experience is the overarching, you know, kind of whole culmination of somebody 
doing business with you and knowing about you. So for me, client experience is everything. And within client experience is customer service. And the customer service part is really the part of you and how you show up in service and support of your customers. So it's not just like customer service just isn't this, you know, one blanket thing. And client experience, customer experience isn't just this like little nuance. It's client experience is a big aspect of your business with all these different categories or buckets, depending on how you like to look at it. And service is just one part of it. But service is one of the most pivotal because if you're not treating your people well, if you're not giving strong service, if you're not supporting people well, that is many people's first indication to start working with somebody else, right? And especially in today's online space, I think more now than ever, people really want to connect with who they're working with, right? And they mm -hmm. really, whether it's to buy a course, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever it is, they want to feel like a human on the other side of that interaction rather than an email on a list or a number on a spreadsheet. And especially I think in today's kind of business climate, it's even more important that we're making ourselves as business owners and brands stand out because of the way we treat and trust and respect and hold our customers and our clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, you said something interesting because it's not just when they come in the door, when they've paid the right. invoice and signed the contract, lead generation is part of that entire experience. So, mm -hmm. and this is where I think personal branding ties in so critically is like who you're representing yourself to be, to build that trust factor. And then once people are in the door, who you continue to be, you know, to really right. show that they can trust you and you can build yes. those deeper relationships. And something else you said about the email, and, I, and I'm sure we're going to get into this when we talk about the five pillars of client experience, but you said it's like the entire experience and the connection. So, and you, and you specifically said, it's not just like a, a number or a name on an email list. And I love that you said that because for me, you know, as a podcast host, there are all these people listening, thousands of people listening to these episodes. And I have no idea who they are. Like, I have no idea who's got my voice in their earbuds right now, you know, <laughs> and I would love to know who they are. I would love that point of connection. Mm -hmm. And I would love to know these people who sign up on the email list, but I don't know them. And I would love to know them. So, you know, giving them that opportunity, I love to ask a question and say, hey, reply to this message and tell me, but very few people actually do that. And I, no. I don't know why that is, but anybody listening, I want to connect with you. Like I yeah. love to build relationships and I love that connection to have a name and a face that go together. So I think it is the business owner's responsibility to create that experience, but it's also the potential client and the client's responsibility to engage in response in return. Yeah. 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 It does. It does take them to lean in. Right. And I think the best we can do as business owners is like you just did encourage it and let them know like wholeheartedly, I want to hear from you. I want to connect with you because I think unfortunately, a lot of people have had, I'm going to, I'm going to use the generalism and say that we've probably all had some form of a negative experience in the online space where we reached out for support. We reached out for service. We even gave positive feedback and never heard anything, never got the loop closed, never got a reply, whatever. Right. Or if we did, it was not a great response. It wasn't a great experience. And so I think a lot of people are somewhat timid to reach out. I think some people are just like, oh, well, what's the point? They're not going to respond. Okay, Robin, you tell me to reply in the email, but you're never going to respond. It's going to be somebody from your team or whatever, right? And, and reminding people that maybe that's not how you do business. Or even if it is a team member who's going to respond, they're going to respond just as authentically and caringly as you would if it was you. But if somebody sends me an email and it comes to my inbox and not like our general team inbox, I respond to every email. Like it is absolutely non-negotiable to me, right? Because me I want like you, I want to know who I'm talking to. I want to connect with people, but to kind of what you were saying before, like the lead generation is important and you bring people in, but unfortunately so many business owners then don't follow through, right? They see the purchase as the end of that interaction with the person 
and they don't follow through on really serving and supporting them and making sure that they got the most out of whatever brought them to you in the first place. And it's, it's so sad for me to see that happen because for the person purchasing the client, the customer, it's a very lackluster in many regards, disappointing experience. And for the business owner, it's such a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's such an easy thing to do is to carry them through a full experience with you versus just thinking that the purchase is like one and done and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about those five pillars. Let's talk about what those are. All righty. So the first one is culture. And I love it because you kind of already talked on it. Like it's top down business owner has to embrace client service, client experience, customer service, however you like to refer to it as. And then the second is service. So Culture is really like the embodiment of a customer centric culture or customer centric approach in the business service is how you show up in service and support. So how you lean into your customers, how you interact with them, how you converse with them. The third is your offers in terms of making sure that what you're creating in your suite of products, like um, products, services, programs, whatever it might be in your business, that it really truly meets a need for your customer and not just a need for you, right? And that they all work well together so that there's a connection to each other and you're leading people on an actual like product and service and program journey. And then the four, or sorry, the uh, fourth is operations. So looking at, and I know you talk about operations a lot, right? It's your jam in many ways. But really looking at our operations, our processes, our procedures, not just with a business lens, but also with a customer lens. So we're advocating for both sides, not just the business side, but saying, okay, we're going to change systems or we're going to drop out this step in our process. That's great for the business. And how does it impact the customer? Because sometimes what might be a good idea for the business is actually very detrimental to your client experience. And may, if you look at it with a customer centric lens, you might think differently. You might make a different decision or you might find some way to have like a compromise, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then really the final one, the fifth one is the journey. So really it's that's piecing everything together because when you hit culture, service, offers, operations, you're curating this really fine tuned and aligned journey for your ideal person to kind of just stay in your world as much as possible, right? Even after maybe what you offer, they don't necessarily have a need for anymore. They continue to tell people about you. They continue to listen to your podcast. They continue to watch your emails. They continue to follow you on social, even if they don't necessarily have a current need right now to be working with you, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't in the future because it's kind of a a timely thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The journey continues essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that you brought that into it because that, that journey is what, I guess, how, how, how can I say it? That it makes the most sense, but it really becomes where client retention isn't solely about that one client, but their journey, their experiences with you on that journey, help them decide to share you. And so when we talk about client retention, it's not solely one person signing up over and over again. It's who they're telling about you. And when you have a strong personal brand, and then you have all of these components, these five pillars implemented Mm -hmm. efficiently within your business, that retention of that one person becomes referrals of many. And that's how you continue to increase your profits. So with that being said, let's talk Mm -hmm. about the three strong client, how, or I guess the three ways that strong client retention increases your profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when you're focusing on each of those five pillars, right. And you're focusing on them with a customer centric lens, as you're doing business, you start to create what I like to call your own recipe for retention, because the way you address your culture is different than I might address my culture, our operations, et cetera. So you're going to have your own unique recipe for retention and how you keep people in your business with you. And that to what you said, isn't always meaning that 
they're staying as a paid client or customer, it's also in who they're referring. Retention expands to the referral market, right? Whether it's affiliate marketing, whether it's just word of mouth. And so one of the biggest things that comes with strong client retention models and really leaning into client experience is reduced issues with customers, right? Because again, if you're focusing back on each of those pillars and doing things with your ideal customer in mind, you're thinking steps ahead of your customer. So you're mitigating issues before they even come to your attention, right? And so right there, you increase your profit margin because you're dealing with less issues. You don't have nearly as many refund requests, chargebacks, right? Or deferrals of program fees or things like that that ultimately impact profit and revenue, right? Um, so there's that. Then on top of it, when you have really strong referrals, when you have that organic marketing machine, if you will, of having strong retention leading to referrals, you can start to reduce your ad spend. And so I know like for the people who are adverse to social media, I am definitely one of them. I do not want to live my life on social media. All the power to those who do is not for me. It gives me high stress and anxiety, uh -huh. um, but I don't want to be funneling my business or fueling my business through thousands of dollars of ad spend every month and trying to pull in people who may or may not be my ideal client, right? And so if I have people who I've retained in my business and I'm focusing my love and support on the people I've already got, it's more likely that the people they're bringing to me are of like mind, are just as aligned, are as just as ideal. They're also very easy to, for the lack of a better term, sell, right? Somebody who's referred to you becomes a much easier person to convert into programs and offers than somebody who comes to you from a Facebook ad right? So you reduce your marketing spend specifically, I would say in the ad spend category, because now you've got people doing what you've been paying Facebook and Instagram ads to do for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that also comes with reduced stress. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. more than just the dollar ROI. Yeah. Um, and then the, another, another way that client retention really helps the bottom line is that your internal systems and operations can become much more streamlined, much more consistent. And even that comes with your team members too, right? Rather than kind of every experience and every issue that happens being, you know, this thing that has to be addressed when you're focusing on client experience. And again, you're mitigating and you're forethinking what could be coming down the road. You're able to streamline and solidify stronger processes so that, you are having a reduction in operation costs because maybe you're streamlining your systems. Maybe you're streamlining your team. So you have one person who handles customer issues, customer conversations, not five different people for all different random things who are all giving different answers, right? You've got a streamlined system, which is going to impact, you know, whatever kind of labor or subcontractor costs you have operational costs, time and product efficiency, right? And energy efficiency for your team. Because the less issues you have, the less, you know, dealing with refund requests and fighting chargebacks, the easier it is for your team to go through the day-to-day. -day. They don't have the energetic and emotional depletion of constantly dealing with customer issues. So just in that productivity goes up. And they can focus on revenue generating tasks or- 100%. Projects. Yeah. hundred percent. There's, there's so much to be said. Okay. So let's, let's summarize this then. Yeah. So when we look at customer retention strategies or client retention strategies, what are your go-tos? Like, what would you tell everybody to, would you reflect back onto those five pillars of customer experience or are mm -hmm. there other things that they should consider? I think the the first and most top one, and I know you stress this in your messaging anyway, but it's know who your customer is, right? Like, and and I say that in the sense of like, sometimes we know who our ideal client is. We know who our ideal customer is, but when we actually take a step back, we realize we're supporting somebody else. We're marketing and messaging to somebody else. And if that's the case, that could actually be a root issue to maybe why you are having challenges in your business, because your, your passion, your calling is to support someone over here, but who you're calling in is a person who's completely different. And if you don't align with that person and that person doesn't align with you, 
then you're going to get the customer issues. You're going to get the refunds, the chargebacks, the no-shows, all that stuff, right? So really like dialing in who your person is and then addressing the messaging to make sure that that's actually who you're calling in, right? Um, and then I'm going to honestly say, look at your own experiences. Our own experiences as consumers are hands down one of the best navigating tools for understanding what we want to do in our business and what we don't want to do. So when I go to like a restaurant and I have a really good experience, I like dissect that to myself. And I'm like, what, what is making me still think about that dinner three days later? Well, the waiter used my name like four times, right? Reminder, always use someone's name in an email at least twice. Golden rule in my company, right? Things like that. And then when you have a bad experience, okay, a, what didn't I like and what could the person or the business have done differently? And let's put measures in place in our business to make sure that we don't repeat what those people did. And if something does happen, we know how to handle it in a better fashion, right? So knowing who our people is, who our people are and leaning into our own experiences are two of my top suggestions, 100%. And then my third and probably my biggest go-to is that when you're struggling with a customer issue or a decision around client experience, tap back into your heart of service because we all created our businesses to be of service to someone else. So what was that initial calling for us? Because that can often be the compass we need to follow when we're trying to make decisions, when we're trying to decide if we're pivoting, if we're dealing with an issue the right way is that we get so bogged down in the day-to-day and the operations of our business, we often forget to tap back into our heart of service and really understand and remember why we're doing what we're doing. Mm, so true. And I like to just add on to that is the values, right? Sometimes mm. when things are askew, go back to what your values are. And are you are you living by those values? Are yeah. you aligned with those values? And like you said, are your customers aligned with those values? Because if yeah. not, your the experience is never going to be pure. It's never going to be organic. Right. And it's not going to be promoted right. outside of the container. So 100%. And your, val- yeah. your values are how you build connection with people. Yeah. Right? Like that's that's fundamentally how you build connection. For me, my values are my, my moral compass checklist. That's yeah. how I like to look at. So like when I look at creating a partnership with someone or when I look at, you know, doing a joint venture or whatever it might be, personal or business, I'm like, do they have this? Do they have this? Do they? And then I can literally, mm-hmm. rather than just saying, mm, it's not, something's off with my moral compass, I can actually tell people why it's not aligned with my moral compass because I have this great checklist essentially mm-hmm. of values that I'm looking for, excuse me, for somebody else to share. And if they don't, that, that usually makes my decision pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. So we just gave so much value in such a short period of time. This was amazing. So will you tell the listeners how they can connect with you and learn more from you? Yeah. So you can come on over to scarletandco.ca. That's our website. A couple different resources on that site. Um, one in particular that will probably interest your audience is our 17 ways to increase client retention, really easy steps of things that you can start doing right now. Like I said, using someone's name in an email at least twice, right? Those kind of tips are on there um, to really help you elevate. And then reach out to me personally. Like I said, I love following up with emails directly. So you can email me anytime at katrina at scarletandco.ca. And that will come to my personal inbox that nobody else has access to. (laughs) Um, And then if you're on social media and you like the Instagrams and such, um, on on Instagram, we're Scarlet and Co. LTD. And then on Facebook, we're Scarlet Co. LTD. So it's slightly different, but hopefully you'll put that in the show notes and then it'll be a little easier for people. (laughs) Yeah, we we always put the website in for sure. And then everybody can... Perfect navigate and, where they want to go. And, so yeah, social um, links are on the bottom. So that's yeah, easy exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was mm-hmm. so valuable. I really appreciated it. And listeners, I encourage you to go over to the show notes because I will link several additional episodes that are related to the different points that we touched on today. So you will have a wealth of information to follow and strategies to implement to improve your cl- client retention. 
and improve your bottom line, increase those profits. So, which is what we all want to do. If you found this information helpful, will you please share it with a friend, coworker, fellow entrepreneur who is striving to grow their business as well. And please leave us a rating and review. Every time you subscribe to the show or leave us a rating and review, it's our opportunity to spread the word further, but get incredible guests like Katrina on the show. So thanks for being here and I will see you all next time. And that's a wrap friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me and be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.